but I um, am very fortunate today to have a special guest, uh, Vanessa Beely. She is an independent investigative journalist and photographer. And unlike most of the people who will spout off about what's going on in Syria and Aleppo, she actually just returned from there as an investigative reporter. So, Vanessa, thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me to come on. Maybe if you don't mind giving our viewers just a couple of words about your background, uh, where you come from, what, what, uh, what you do, and that sort of thing. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm uh, British-born. Um, my father was a British diplomat, British ambassador to the Middle East. I write predominantly for 21st Century Wire, uh, and the articles um, have also been printed, uh, published at Mint Press. Good. That's great. Well, as I don't need to tell you that this has been a really dramatic week when it comes to Syria and Aleppo. Uh, we saw yesterday the State Department spokesman John Kirby he warned the Russians that if they continue uh, fighting and assisting the Syrian government, more Russian lives will be lost, more Russian planes will be shot down. A very chilling thing for him to say. He said Russians will be coming home in body bags. It sounds like a threat, and you might just say it's, it's typical of John Kirby's uh, blowhard uh, style of, of speaking, but when you couple that with the fact that in the, during the ceasefire that lasted about a week and ended a few days ago, the U.S. and its allies were, were shipping literally tons of anti-aircraft rockets to their rebels in and around Aleppo. New York Times, the brutal strategy behind Russia's massacres in Syria. That's a little flavor of our media over here, Vanessa. How, how accurate is that in your experience? You just returned uh, from a trip to Aleppo. The majority um, of the Western media in the UK as well as in the US are very much portraying Aleppo as a sort of homogenous city. That's not true. Um, we're talking here very clearly the tale of two cities, if you like. Aleppo has been divided by the terrorist invasion that happened around 2012, right from the very beginning. Aleppo has resisted any attempts to pull it into the so-called mythical revolution. Um, and because of that fact, um, the, the invasion that happened in 2012 has inflicted punitive measures on Western Aleppo, if you like, um, because they were responsible for resisting the armed revolution. 600,000 civilians fled from Eastern Aleppo into Western Aleppo very early on when the terrorists invaded. Those that are left, there's probably around, according to the Aleppo um, Medical Association that we met with when we went to Aleppo, there's around 200,000, maybe even less now, um, people left in Eastern Aleppo. At least a quarter of that, if not more, are terrorists and their families. The civilians that are, that are in Eastern Aleppo, the majority of them, are being held hostage. We were given many witness testimonies that stated to us they have family that are still in East Aleppo that are terrified to leave to come into the government-held Western Aleppo because if they leave, members of their family, their friends, their relations will be murdered by the terrorists. So fundamentally, these terrorists are using these civilians as human shields and then declaring to the media that's accepting their propaganda that these civilians are under threat. The only reason they're under threat is because they're being imprisoned in this area by the terrorists and used as human shields. But these internally displaced people, 90% have gone into government-held areas for protection. That's over 7 million people that have been displaced um, inside Syria that have fled to government-held areas. And let's just also dismantle the whole sectarian idea, because if you go to the, the coastal areas, for example, like Tartus and Latakia, you will find there, there are Sunni, there are Alawite, there are Christians, there are all manner of denominations that have fled to that area to cohabit and coexist side by side in taking refuge from, from the terrorist attacks and, and massacres that are going on in their homes and villages. So you're absolutely right to make that point. And the other point is there is a huge um, um, campaign of dehumanization of the Syrian people by the Western media. Um, yesterday I saw that um, those that are in West Aleppo were being described as Assad supporters. This is a complete lie. 
these people are not necessarily Assad supporters. They may be against Assad. The difference is they don't believe in killing Syria to improve Syria. The hospitals, there are three main hospitals in East Aleppo, only three. And there are seven um, basic health centers that don't have the facilities to, to carry out operations and so on. Those three hospitals in al uh in Al-Zara, and the Omar Abdulaziz Hospital, which was created by the Grand Mufti Hassoun, are all occupied by terrorists. The top floors are being used as sniping towers. Again, this is not described. And they will treat terrorists as a priority over civilians. The Al-Quds Hospital, which has been in the news recently, which, by the way, was, was destroyed, according to all mainstream media, in April. It was reduced to a, to a smoldering heap, as per their reports. It's now suddenly rebuilt in the last few months and is now... And again, I, I have to stress here, that comes from every single Syrian person that I met across the governorates that I travel to. They do not even consider there is any differentiation between this terrorists. They are all criminals. They are all mass murderers. They are all rapists. They are all torturers. They are all abusers of their children and their families. And yesterday, in fact, um, you're quite right, 80% of those 200,000 people that are in East Aleppo have been described as being Nusra Front. Um, so, and, and yesterday, in fact, while the media was, was um, you know, amplifying and, and megaphoning the, cam the, the propaganda that was being provided to them by the terrorist factions inside East Aleppo, mortars were being rained down upon civilians in West Aleppo. We had descriptions of it being like hell. These yeah. terrorists that are called rebels, that are called moderate rebels, that are called opposition, are massacring Syrian people. They are not Syrian people who are Assad supporters. They are Syrian people, whether they are Christian, whether they are Shia, whether they are Sunni, whether they are Alawite. Every single one of them will say to you, we are Syrian first and foremost. And we are not here, even if we disagree with our government, we're not here to kill our country in order to improve it. Um, the White Helmets, despite saying that they are an NGO and that they're independent and that they have no funding from interested parties in the conflict in Syria, they're receiving probably now around $100 million at a, at a conservative estimate from um, the U.S. via USA, $23 million. From the U.K., we had Boris Johnson yesterday saying that he was going to up the ante to £32 million. Pounds. Japan is now involved. Denmark, Holland... Uh, Germany the other day confirmed that they would give them seven million. We know um, for a fact they, they fabricate evidence. That's been proven in my reports. We know for a fact that they are sectarian. Um, they stole uh, ambulances, all of the ambulances, three of their fire engines. They murdered other real civil defense members. They kidnapped others. They drove others out of East Aleppo into West Aleppo. And this is not an isolated incident. Basically, the same procedure happened in Idlib, in Deir Azor, in Raqqa, um, across Syria, in other words. So, you know, this organization is basically, as far as I'm concerned, they're a terrorist support group. They're acting as terrorists in many instances, and they are terrorists. And yet they're being described by our governments as humanitarian first responders. The entire war propaganda, the dirty war on Syria war propaganda, is underpinned by this organization. And so I think this is why we're seeing this incredible rush to, to, to give credibility to this organization. And we have to worry about what sort of tool this, this organization will be in the hands of whoever is elected next in the United States. Mm. If it's Hillary Clinton, it's kind of terrifying if these guys get the Nobel Peace Prize. You're talking about terrorists receiving um, the Nobel Peace Prize. That, that's a descent into, into insanity, as far as I can work out. Well, in all defense, uh, Obama got it, and he's, and he's been well, pretty bad, too. So maybe it actually would be appropriate. Um. <laughs>